To ensure that you get sharp, clear images, you should only stack the best subs. So after a night of shooting astrophotography, when you have your collection of lights, they should always be inspected. If you're shooting longer subs, several minutes long for example, and end up with a few dozen to a couple hundred in the morning, you might do a quick visual inspection, during which you'd be looking for obvious problems such as clouds, airplanes, or satellites tracking across the image, or images that are blurry or with elongated stars. The latter can be harder to spot visually, but nonetheless, if you're careful, you'll spot them. And it's easier to be careful when you don't have too many subs to inspect. But if you shoot short subs and end up in a morning with hundreds to even thousands of subs to inspect, it's best to have a tool to help you with this. And my favorite tool is Pixinsight's excellent subframe selector. By measuring for changes in light as compared to the norm, and for star elongation, as well as FWHM, which provides clues to the quality of the focus, and doing a star count, the subframe selector can reliably remove images that are clouded, misted, fogged over, where there are tracking or guiding problems, or where your telescope may have been jostled by a night breeze, or where other problems might have thrown the quality of a subframe off and made it unsuitable for the final stack. And over time, I have developed what I have found to be a reliably effective process for applying the subframe selector. Bear in mind, this isn't going to be a comprehensive look at how to use the subframe selector, but rather a very practical look at the methodology that I use in hopes it will help you too. Let's go ahead and jump in. In PixInsight, I'll open up the subframe selector. And you can see data that I was calling from a past project. Let me just delete that out of there. At the top in the routine dropdown box, I'll select measure subframes. This will tell the subframe selector to assess the subframes. In the system parameters section, I need to set up for my camera. And the Player One Aries M using the Sony IMX533 sensor in my telescope reveals 0.61 arc seconds per pixel. And the camera is a 14-bit camera, so in the camera resolution section, in the drop-down menu, I'll select 14 bits. Now I need to pop over to the folder containing my lights and calibration frames, and there I need to create a folder which will receive the output of the subframe selector. I'll just make a folder named SFS for subframe selector. And then, back in PixInsight, in the directory section, I'll select that folder. That tells the subframe selector to put the called output images into that folder. Now, if you're working with data from a mono camera, you're going to want to separately assess the images from each filter. So you'll run an assessment on your luminance, then your red, green, and blue, or your individual narrowband filters if you were shooting narrowband. But if you are working with data from an OSC camera, you can assess all the subs at once. Since I'm working with LRGB, I'm going to put the luminance data into the subframe selector first. So in the subframe selector, I'll click the Add Files box on the top right. When the Windows folder opens on the top right, I'll go to the small search window and type star 0 L 60. Using the naming convention that I have selected for my NINA images, this selects out all the 60 second luminance subs from the NINA output. Then I'll click on one of those image files, hit Control A to select them all, then mouse click on the open button and they'll be opened in the subframe selector. Now, all I have to do is hit the run process icon, the little circle on the lower left, and the subframe selector will begin its assessments of the information. That'll take a couple minutes, so I'll just speed through it. When the subframe selector is done, it's going to produce a subframe selector measurements window and a subframe selector expressions window. It is defaulted to removing images with stars numbering below the first standard deviation, but I don't want to use its measurements. I want to review the assessment so I can determine what to remove. And there are a lot of parameters by which we might go about determining which information to call. But I find that using just four of those parameters gives reliably very good output. We'll go over those parameters and then how to use the expressions box and then how to make manual selections. I'll start by erasing the default expressions in the expressions box. Now we'll begin by learning to use the expressions box, because if you have a lot of subs to assess, that's the way to go. The first thing I'm going to do is assess by full width half maximum, or FWHM, which in simple terms assesses the focus of the stars. The gray line in the middle of the graph represents the first standard deviation of measurements. The stuff in that gray line falls near the norm, and the lighter gray line represents the second standard deviation. Anything above the second standard deviation will be blurry. Let's go ahead and take a look. We can manually click on a point, and in the image list above, that point will appear and become highlighted. We can then double click on that highlighted line, and the image will appear in the PixInsight window, allowing us to do a visual inspection. 
I'll just drag it over to the right and apply a screen transfer function so we can see it. As you can see, these stars are somewhat blurry. Now this information doesn't tell us why, perhaps the telescope was vibrating a little bit due to wind, or the focuser hadn't quite fully settled, who knows. But that image is a reject. So in the expressions box, I'm going to write an expression that will tell the subframe selector to remove all subframes above the second standard deviation. I'm going to move the mouse over the graph to the right, and on the blue graph find the subframe at the lowest peak over the second standard deviation. Hover the mouse cursor over that subframe, and take note of the FWHM measurements in the gray box. Then I'll enter one point below that measurement in the expressions box, and hit the right arrow button. And in the graph, you can see that every sub above that FWHM measurement or beyond the second standard deviation has now been removed. The next parameter I'm going to assess is eccentricity. This looks for oddities like elongation in the stars. In the eccentricity parameter, we're going to look for anything above the second standard deviation. And we can see some FWHM rejects there, but also new rejects. If we take a look at an eccentric frame, we see that the stars, well, pretty much everything is missing. Eccentricity can look for unusual shapes of stars, and it can also catch cloud cover blocking images. So in the expressions box, I'll enter eccentricity space less than, and in the graph find the lowest peak above the second standard deviation, Take a look at the eccentricity measurement and enter one point below that measurement. And this will tell the subframe selector to reject everything below our FWHM measurement and our eccentricity measurement. And note that in the expressions box, when you are connecting two expressions together, you have to use the double ampersand. So you see FWHM, less than, and then a numeric entry, then a double ampersand followed by the eccentricity expression. Now I'm going to enter another double ampersand and will assess by the median value. The median assesses the average pixel value in the image, essentially how bright the average pixel value is. Lower values tend to indicate more evenly illuminated, cleaner skies. In the expressions box, I'll prepare by entering median space and a less than symbol and then another space. And in the drop down menu under measurements graph, I'll select median. Here we can see there are only three images that cross over the second standard deviation. When I hover over one of those images, you can see that there are two median values. Use the upper one. Now I'll enter one point below that median value into the expressions editor. And just to show what it's going to do, I'll hit the right arrow button. Now, everything beyond the second standard deviation of FWHM, eccentricity, and median has been removed. There's only one more parameter we'll look at, a star count. So in the left drop-down menu, beneath the words measurement graph, I'll go back up and find stars. And in the expressions editor, I've entered stars greater than. Now this time we're going to look at the bottom side of the graph. And we're looking for trends in which an unusually low number of stars was all that was visible. Because if the star count suddenly trends low, something is inhibiting them from showing. Perhaps cloud, or they are so blurred they don't even register as stars in the count. So for the star parameter, we are much less interested in the standard deviations, and much more interested in sudden reductions in number. And between the bottom of the second standard deviation and the top, there is a difference of about 100 stars. I interpret that as meaning that for a while, there was enough wispy cloud in the air to block the dimmer stars from many subs. So I want to reject those subs as well. So in the stars parameter, I'm going to enter 100, telling the stars parameter that it is to reject any sub with less than 100 stars counted in it. And when I hit the right facing triangle in the expressions box, it now calculates all my parameters, FWHM, eccentricity, median, and stars. Now on the upper left of the subframe selectors box, you can see that out of 113 lights, I've only accepted 77. In the subframe selector main window, which is the vertical window all the way to the left, up in the routine drop-down menu, I will now select output and hit the circular icon at the bottom to activate the routine. And the subframe selector will put all the subs that I have accepted into the SFS folder. Now I'm going to repeat this process for the lights made with red, green, and blue filters. However, since there will be far fewer subs, rather than making entries in the expressions editor, I'm just going to manually click out the rejected subs. So in the main subframe selector window, I'll hit clear to get the L filter lights out of there. Then in the routine drop-down list, I'll select measure because we're going to measure the next group of subs. Then I'll click the add files button. This will open up the Windows Explorer. In the search parameter window, I'll hit star 0 R60. 
which will sort out all the 60 second red filter subs from the lights folder. I'll click on one of the light files and hit Ctrl A to select them all and then open. They will all appear in the subframe selector window. Then I'll hit the circular icon to have the subframe selector begin measuring them. Now in the subframe selector window, you can see this time we are only working with 22 files. Because there are so few files, I'm not going to write expressions in the expressions editor. I'm just going to manually click out the ones I don't want. And in the expressions editor, I'll erase the expressions. I don't think that's strictly necessary. I do it to make sure I don't hit the right process icon out of habit without realizing it, which would cause the subframe selector to call subs according to the previous parameters. I've done that in the past, so I, I have good reason to know I need to delete that out of there. Now in the drop down menu below measurements graph, I'll select FWHM. But looking at it, we can see that all the stars here fall within the second standard deviation. So then I'll select eccentricity. With eccentricity selected, you can see that we have a few points that go above the second standard deviation. At the peak of each point, there's going to be an image, and if I click on it, you'll see the image becomes highlighted in the list in the measurements window. You'll also see to the left in that window that the image receives an X and a lock sign. That means the image has been marked in the files as rejected or called, and it's locked so that I cannot accidentally put it back into the acceptable list. If I double click on the image name, it'll open. I can hit Control A so that the screen transfer function is applied to the opened image. And we can see that there's nothing visible. And this means that there were clouds in front of the telescope at that moment, which is why the eccentricity parameter rejected this sub. Be sure if you are manually removing subs by clicking on them, that you move your mouse cursor over the entire blue line above the second standard deviation or lower if you choose to reject more subs, because sometimes subs will also be on the straight line and they will not be indicated until the mouse cursor passes over where the sub is. So if you find a sub beyond acceptable parameters, just click on it and the subframe selector will mark it as rejected. If you want to visually inspect that sub, double click it in the list and the subframe selector will open it for you. Now we'll assess the median. In the drop down menu, I'll select median and we can see that nothing is above the second standard deviation. So we have nothing to change here. Next, we'll assess the stars. And when we assess the stars, we are looking at the underside of the second standard deviation. We can see two subs fall below the second standard deviation, and they are already rejected. I'm going to trace the mouse cursor along the graph line to get a sense in the difference in the number of the stars between the second standard and the first standard deviation. If the difference is huge, I'll consider this to be a measurement peculiarity. I reject a few more subs with higher star counts, but this looks acceptable. So in the subframe selector main window, beside routine, I'll select output and activate the process by hitting the circular icon lower left. And all of the accepted subs will then be output into the SFS folder. Now I'm going to rinse and repeat this process for the images shot with the green and blue filters. And when the whole thing is done, I'll stack it in the way I usually stack images using the weighted batch pre-processing script. And after all of those called subs are stacked together with the previous day's called subs, we get this as an outcome. This is the Eagle Nebula project. It's ongoing. I'm going to need to film this for two or three more nights before I consider it done, but we get the sharpness that appears here, despite how little information there is to work with because only the best subs have been accepted. Calling does cost integration time, but the outcome in terms of quality, I think is worth it. Thank you for watching. And if you have any thoughts or observations, please leave them in the comments section below. And if you like this video, I sure would appreciate it if you took a moment to like and subscribe. And whatever you do, have a blast doing astrophotography. And get out there and shoot that sky.